hello welcome to this lesson on how to solve the center of mass of a semicircular wire of radius r okay so if you've not subscribed to my channel kindly subscribe for more videos all right so let's read the question together you're supposed to find a centroid of a uniform semicircular wire of radius r okay so the question is very simple but difficult to analyze okay but let's try to analyze this now in the first place let's consider a case where a uniform wire is a straight line okay so let's say if i have a wire being like this okay so it's like this and then it has a length of total length of l okay then i can see this if this is zero then here will be l okay so the total length the total length is what l okay now if i do i i try to divide this whole length l or this whole wire into some small portions of l, l okay i would like it something like something small like this okay then with that small portion let's call that one the l okay we are calling that portion the l now we are trying to transform the whole of this wire to a semicircular okay let's say if i transform the wire to this level something like this okay if i transform the wire like this then the question is on which point okay on this circumference okay like this the point here on which point is our centroid located mind you center of mass is actually measuring a distance or position okay so just measuring the position at which the center of the mass or the heaviest mass of this body will be concentrated at okay so if i bend the wire like i said like this then it means here will be zero here will be our l okay so in other words the whole circumference here that we will cover is what l okay the whole length i hope you, you get it and so if i try to find a small portion of this circumference like we did here and this portion will be what our dl i hope you get it the same thing that we've transformed back to this now when you transform it back to the semicircular shape there is no way it's going to look like this um, this one okay so let's try to change everything to the cartesian plane and use our knowledge in cartesian plane to solve this okay because if it was straight like this we would have been, we would have been able to solve it okay now since it is not straight let's try to like i said change it to the cartesian plane now if i come to the cartesian plane and draw my plane like this okay and let's say this is it all right now every small portion like we said is what dl okay let me pick some you are saying that since it's formed it has formed the semicircular shape look at this side if i call this side to be the center okay if i call this side to be the center then every point to the circumference is a, is a r okay that is from this question r is here okay i hope you can get it you can see that all right so so here if i point every point here to here is our r okay and an r can make an angle of what theta here so at any point in time what will be our x and what will be our y now if i call here to be our x coordinate and here to be our y coordinate then looking at the situation now once you bend the wire like this okay mind you this part this part they are not part of our wire okay i hope you get it now like i said the middle the middle part of here is not part of the wire the wire is only concentrated here okay so on which point on this wire is a center of mass located now at that point okay basically what we should know is that by all means if this is uniform and you bend it uniformly like this then it means the center will be located at the center the exact center on this wire and 
and if you draw the Cartesian coordinate along the center of the wire, it means the coordinate here will be some zero corresponding to the corresponding to the x axis, okay, comma some y. I, ho I hope you can see it. Because if I draw the, the, the this thing like this, the semicircular thing like this, and I see that this is the center, okay. And I'm drawing a Cartesian code plane along, along or across the center, and it means at this point where our center of mass will be located, corresponding to the x axis, we have what zero comma some y. I hope you get it. So it means the y coordinate for this particular question is also zero. Okay, sorry, the x coordinate rather is zero. All right, let me clean everything and try to get our things down. now if you remember we this this one will actually demand just a one dimension because you want to find the points on the y axis this, this point okay this point is what we need that will give us the center of mass of the wire okay so just dealing with a 1d okay now with this idea we know already that our lambda which is our density of this wire is actually given by the small mass of the wire divided by the small length okay so now our dm is what we need is equal to lambda dl if you remember we said something like the center of mass rcm is actually equal to integral for uh, just one dimension integral lambda dl over integral of dl we've done a video on this before okay, so this is how the formula is now it's just very simple the RCM okay is actually equal to integral of the M okay sorry here is supposed to be Y or X depending on where you are looking for okay so it's Y the M over integral of the M this is how the formula is the original formula okay so if you are in one dimension like I said depending on where you are looking at this time you are looking at the one dimension on the y axis that is why we use y so if it was supposed to be x like a horizontal line like this then we would have used x okay this is what we had there's a formula and now if you change the dm to lambda and the dl this is what you will get okay now let's try to simplify this this rcm will be what if i factor lambda out i get y dl over lambda out integral of dl it means lambda can take lambda out now we are left with what y d integral of y dl over integral of dl okay now i've been able to establish that our rcm which will be only in the y direction i've explained that the reason why i've explained the reason why x is zero all right so it's equal to integral of y dl over integral of dl okay now if you come back to this diagram if i draw a straight line to come here okay just a straight line to come and touch the x axis i'll get something like this okay and this is my theta and this is my r this is a y axis i don't know a y value that i don't know this side it corresponds to another y value so at any, at any point in time what will be our y okay the reason why i want to transform this back to our radius and theta is because we've been given the r okay we don't know why so we have to transform everything in terms of radius and our theta now at any point in time from the pythagorean uh, pythagorean theorem or pythagoras triangle that you know at any point in time our y is equal to r sine theta you can use the suka or the ideas that we have in the particular theorem okay so this will be our y at any point in time then what will be our dl mind you if i have theta this theta okay i can calibrate this theta the theta was like this in the diagram that we drew it was like this theta now i can calibrate this theta into some small d thetas okay can cal calibrate it into small 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 theta i hope you get it now 
Now, what will each calibration the theta correspond to? Okay, so let's keep this in mind that y is what r sine theta, and we are coming to find our dl. Okay, now you know that this is our formula, you know this is our y. Okay, so what is our dl? Look at here, we said that we can calibrate theta into small, small theta, so it means that I can take one of the arc, okay, and call it like this, and take a very small portion. I'm just drawing this big because I want you to see okay but I'm it's like I'm taking a very small portion of the theta which is the theta okay and that will correspond to a very small portion of the arc which will be our DL because we said that a very small portion here okay this side is called DL but I'm just writing it big enough for you to see okay a very small portion of our arc which is dl we got the dl from this diagram this the, the horizontal diagram here over here okay i hope you remember so don't forget anything that we do here all right now with this we know that already here is our radius okay now with the idea of the length of an arc so here dl here becomes an arc okay if you remember from mensurations um, the length of an arc is given by so dl the length of it will, gi will be given by theta over 360 times 2 pi r okay where this theta here will correspond to the angle that is given as the dl and now the angle is what the theta so we can quickly erase this theta here and write the theta there okay because the angle it is producing is what the theta but not theta this time okay now looking at this 360 is the same as 2 pi in radians okay so in radians I can take this out okay and now my DL will be what just R times the theta that will be what R the theta okay so this is the idea and this is why our DL is supposed to be what R the theta I hope you get it now so it's just from the length of an arc here like I said that a very small portion of the angle will produce a very small portion of the arc which is the dl and now if i use the idea of finding the length of an arc by dl is equal to theta over 30 times 2 pi but then the theta that we are talking about is very small portion of theta which is the d theta okay all right so we know our dl to be r d theta so now we know that dl is equal to r d theta so now that we've gotten everything this is okay with us we've been able to change the l to r the theta y to times r sine theta now theta the range of theta will be from what to what because you're coming to integrate everything with respect to theta it's okay so it's like what angle does this whole semicircular wire covers it covers pi okay that is 180 degrees so the theta will range from zero to what pi like this so you are done with the calibration of our, our, our quantities or with the transformation of our quantity so we have to come back and then put everything in the integration and solve it okay all right so now we know that rcm which is equal to this side okay this side i'm writing everything straight it will be integral from zero to what pi everything will change to theta so zero to pi then y is what r sine theta dot r d theta I hope you get it over integral of what r d theta from 0 to what pi you are putting everything in place of it through this equation that we have here okay this one now it means our rcm will be equal to now r is a constant here Okay, so r times r in the numerator is what r squared. So I can factor that out and get r squared out. Integral from 0 to pi sine theta d theta. The down part to r is a constant. So 0 to pi d theta. Now I'll get something like r. Okay, because one r can take the r at the top there. Then if I integrate sine theta, I get negative, of course, theta. Okay. And from 0 to pi over if I integrate the theta I'll get something like theta 
and from 0 to pi okay I hope you get it now now with this idea here you can see that the whole of this is equal to if I put my pi in there's a negative or is a negative into bracket and you put pi in you get what negative one then minus when you put zero in cos zero is what one okay all over when I put pi in I get pi here minus zero okay now I'm coming to write everything at the top here now RCM is actually equal to R into bracket negative of minus two okay because the bracket here will give me minus two now get hot two then over hot pi RCM is equal to two R over pi mind you this is in the y direction okay so uh main RCM is actually equal to zero comma then the y direction so that people will see or your examiner will see that you are actually calculating in the y direction all right so this is the solution to the question and um, I hope you like it please leave a comment in the comment section if this is very this will be very helpful to you okay kindly subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed yet to support this channel thank you and see you next time